Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Emmanuel. We thank you so much for joining us in person today as we receive the gifts of Christ in word and sacrament. We thank all of you also out there uh, listening on the radio. This is Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Seaboy. We're broadcasting on 88.5 FM, WCTP, Gagetown, Michigan Radio. Or if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, we thank you for joining us those ways as well. We've got a couple of quick announcements for you today. The first one is there is no voters meeting this Monday. We're pushing it all back a month. That's because of COVID concerns. So voters meeting will be the following month we'll present the budget and then the month after in june we will vote on the budget so may 17th budget will be presented june 21st but budget will be voted on so please make a note of that and if you got questions about that please just ask me after service we had a music concert this morning we thank our musicians and, of course, our musical director, Barbara Bleck, for all of their work on that concert. If you maybe missed it, or in the, if, if you're out there on the radio or on Facebook and you missed the concert, that's okay. It should be on Facebook and YouTube as well. So please go back and watch it. Very well done concert. Thank you, musicians, for that. Uh, we're also going to be highlighting some of our seniors just a couple a week until graduation. Today we're highlighting two seniors, uh, Grace Williamson and Evan Bowles. We'll be highlighting them. As you can see in that insert that you've got, you've got a little bit of more info about them. For those watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can see their information during communion distribution. We'll be highlighting just a couple seniors each week until their graduation. Also, we are using Divine Service at a 1, beginning on page 151, so you out there on the radio can join us at home as well. We begin our service with our opening hymn, 480. As you see in your bulletin, we'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. <laughs>
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins unto God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake, forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In your presence there is fullness of joy, at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up, and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. <clears throat> In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord save. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading this morning, written in the book of Acts, chapter 3. While the lame man, who was now healed, clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's, astounded. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, Men of Israel, why do you wonder at this, or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. The faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets, that this Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets long ago. This is the word of the Lord. Christ has risen from the dead. God the Father has crowned him with glory and honor. He has given him dominion over the works of his hands. He has put all things under his feet. The epistle written in 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world did not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Whoever practices righteousness is righteous, as he is righteous. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Gospel, according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened 
and thought that they saw a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? Why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it before them. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the prophets, in the Psalms, must be fulfilled, that he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You, Please be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, 633. We'll sing verses 1, 6, 7, and 8. Next to our sermon this morning, our gospel reading from Luke 24, especially these words. As they were talking about these things, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit. So far, text. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. Of course, that's not the way the disciples felt. Still, this is Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday night. The disciples had seen Jesus already. Mary had seen Jesus at the tomb. And the two Emmaus disciples had seen Jesus and then ran all the way back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples. And while they were still talking about these things, Jesus himself again stands among them. And what's their reaction? 
Did you notice the disciples' reaction in their gospel reading today? Those words are heaped up, aren't they? They're startled. They're frightened. They're troubled. They have doubts. They disbelieved for joy and were marveling. On Easter Sunday, that's their reaction. Disbelieving, troubled, doubting, frightened, and startled. Whenever God acts, that's a sinner's response. To be troubled, to be startled, to have doubts arise. Because sinners always assume the worst of God. We assume that whenever God acts, it's to our detriment. That God's coming to judge us in our sin. And that must be how those disciples felt. There's Jesus, the all-powerful God, the one whom they betrayed and denied and rejected and gave over to Pilate and the Jews to be crucified. And he stands before them alive. Nail marks and spear thrust even alive. They'd rather not believe it. It's frightening, startling, troubling. And they marvel that this Jesus who they saw die, just three days later, stands before them alive. No doubt they were assuming that Jesus had come to punish them for their sins. After all, they had some pretty big sins. And yet Jesus says to them, Peace. Peace to you. Isn't that what Holy Week is all about? Jesus giving peace. That's what he does on Monday, Thursday. He gives them peace. So he gives them his body and blood given and shed for them for the forgiveness of their sins. That's what he does on Good Friday, isn't it? As he's hanging upon the tree, it is finished. Their sin, their condemnation, their punishment in hell, that's finished. Through his death, he gives them peace before the Father. And of course, on Easter Sunday, as Jesus is risen from the dead, he comes to bring that peace accomplished on Friday. On the day of victory, he comes giving peace on earth. That we would not be startled or frightened or troubled, that we would not have doubts, or that we would not be marveling, but that we would expect God to do the unexpected the unexpected. The expected thing for God to do is punish sin. That's just. That's fair. That's of the law. That's the way we sinners think, isn't it? That God should punish. Of course, not me, but the sinners over there or over there. God should deal with them. God should deal with you. That's how those disciples must have felt. As Jesus stood right before them, looking them in the eye, that God was there to deal with them. God should deal with your sin, shouldn't he? We know what the law of God is, those Ten Commandments that we break all the time. We should be troubled about breaking them. We should be frightened about breaking them. Of course, John reminds us in our epistle reading today with some wonderful law. No one who abides in him, in Jesus, keeps on sinning. And so, my fellow Christian, as you keep on sinning, you don't abide in him. Isn't that what we must assume from 1 John? 
But as we keep on sinning day after day, we mustn't abide in Jesus. That would be fair. That would be just. That would be right. And yet Jesus doesn't deal with us according to the law. As he doesn't deal with his disciples according to the law. We see that abundantly clear in our gospel reading today. That Jesus deals with those disciples and with us according to the gospel. Peace to you. Jesus speaks. Isn't that so wonderful? Amid our sin, amid our continual sinning, and the fact that we should not be abiding in Jesus, Jesus comes to you and says, peace to you. Amid your sin and your sinful state and your disbelieving heart, Jesus forgives you your sin. That's what Holy Week is all about. Forgiving the sins of sinners who are startled and troubled and doubting and marveling and disbelieving. And so Jesus forgives your sins. Through his death, through his crucifixion, your sins are forgiven, put away. And Jesus stands before you now, today, to do exactly that. Doesn't Luke make that point abundantly clear as well? As Jesus asks them for food. The Emmaus disciples had just recognized Jesus by the breaking of the bread, by table fellowship. And now again, Jesus eats with his disciples in this table fellowship. Luke invites us to see that Jesus still eats with his disciples with you. He still comes to you, Jesus Christ, true God of the Father, true man, bearing the marks of his crucifixion. He still comes to you with his word to declare your sins forgiven, peace to you. He still comes to you to eat with you as he ate with his disciples on Monday, Thursday, he gives you his body, true God, true man, and his blood poured out for you, a sinner, for the forgiveness of your sins. Have you anything to eat? Yes. In the divine service, we receive Jesus through word and sacrament. We sinners come before Jesus, gathering together to receive him and his gifts. We acknowledge that just like those disciples, we are troubled and startled by what God does. And sometimes doubts arise in our hearts. And yes, so often we sin. And we do not deserve to be a part of Jesus. And yet he practices righteousness for us. He lays down his life for you, that your sins would be forgiven, that you would receive him. And so he comes to you this day, as he did to his disciples, to eat with you, to give you himself, to open your mind to the law, the prophets, and the Psalms, to teach you everything he's done for you, and everything he is doing for you now. How blessed we are to receive Jesus Christ in him crucified. Peace to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ crucified. Amen. Having heard the word of God, we now confess our common Christian faith by way of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, 
God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We would ordinarily gather our tithes at this time. We will not pass the plate in the pew rack. If you've given already, we thank you so much for your generosity. Or if you'll give on your way out, thank you in advance. I invite our usher to come forward with our tithes as we hear a musical offering. Would you please stand for prayer, and then we'll sing the offertory. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, how we give thanks before you, that you do not deal with us according to our sins or our sinful state, and yet you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to fulfill the law in our stead and grant us remission of sins through his death upon the tree. We thank you for bringing Jesus to us again this day through word and sacrament. Strengthen our hearts that we would not be disbelieving, but always believing and trusting in Jesus for our salvation. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon all those who are hospitalized. Strengthen them in their bodies and restore them unto good health. Bless, O oh Lord, all of those who are dealing with the effects of COVID or dealing with the effects of being vaccinated. Strengthen them, O Lord, and restore them to good health, that we would give thanksgiving to you alone. Heavenly Father, uplift all of those who have ongoing health concerns among us. We ask your blessings, O Lord, upon all of our high school seniors. They have not had an easy time this last year or so of school. We thank you for the gifts and talents that you have given to each of them and how they use those gifts and talents to further your kingdom. This week, O oh Lord, we especially ask your blessings upon Grace Williamson and Evan Bowles. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the faith that you have given to Grace and Evan. Uplift them in every way and give them great joy through Jesus Christ, their Savior. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon our dear school, Christ the King, 
Bless all of our faculty, staff, and students that we would rejoice in your gifts together. For we ask all of this, trusting in Jesus Christ and praying it all in his name. Amen. We sing the offertory. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name of the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
this true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. Lord, look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn, 469. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 6. <laughs> 